Hey, what's up guys? My name is John and I'm an emergency medicine physician assistant. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys how to become a physician assistant. How do you become a PA? I'm going to start this video out with the big picture and then I'm going to go through all the different steps and stages and things you need to do so that you can one day become a physician assistant if that is your ultimate goal. And in future videos, I'm gonna be breaking down each of these steps in even more detail. I already have a video on interviewing tips and how to interview for PA school. So if you don't wanna miss any of these future videos or updates, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you guys could please just take a millisecond and hit that like button down below. It really helps my channel out so much. It really helps us get seen by more people on YouTube. I'm not going to waste any more time with you guys. Let's get started. So on a broad level to become a physician assistant, this is what you need to do. You need to obtain a bachelor's degree. You need to have some healthcare experience, a graduate level entrance exam, such as the GRE, or now they're experimenting with something called the PA CAT. You then have to get accepted to a PA program. Once you're accepted into a physician assistant program, the program will usually last somewhere between two and three years. They teach you the same thing. The time frame is just more or less how many breaks you kind of get in between the semesters. After you finish PA school, you go on and take a board exam known as the PANTS. When you finish the PANTS and you actually pass this exam, you are then allowed to apply to get a state license and practice in your respective state or multiple states, depending on which states you need to work in. So to get from point A to point B will usually take you anywhere from six to seven, eight years. It kind of depends on if you have any gap years in between. There is a slight variation to what I just told you guys. There do exist PA programs that are almost like a fast track kind of thing. You apply to the university that also has a PA program and they'll do this three plus two kind of setup. What it is is you will earn your bachelor's degree in three years and then if you meet their entry requirements, you will transition directly into their PA program. So as of right now, the fastest way to become a physician assistant is in five years as to my knowledge. So now I'm gonna break down each and every step, starting with earning your bachelor's degree or getting into some sort of undergrad degree. To enter PA school, you need to have a bachelor's degree. What the degree is in, what subject matter the degree is in, does not really matter. What's important is that you have all of their prerequisite courses completed, and for most of them, you need to have good grades in them. You can't just take it and get a C. You need to actually do well in these courses. It is almost guaranteed that every PA program will have you take two semesters worth of general chemistry, two semesters worth of biology, and usually an advanced biology course in addition to that. They'll want you to have at least one semester of microbiology under your belt with a lab, anatomy and physiology, usually with a lab component attached to that. In terms of non-science related prereqs, PA programs will want you to have a statistics course, two semesters worth of English, which is fine because a lot of universities make having English requirement anyways to earn a bachelor's degree. And PA programs will also want you to have at least one semester worth of some sort of psychology, usually at least an intro to psychology course. Now the next set of courses are things that PA programs, some of them require you to have and others would prefer you to have. So things like organic chemistry or biochemistry, genetics, physics, a sociology course, or possibly even some foreign languages. But you can't just go through the motions and get all of those courses under your belt. You also need to excel in them. And some PA programs will be looking at both your science GPA and your regular GPA. And that's to prevent you from taking a bunch of non-science courses and padding your GPA. The courses each individual program will want you to have may vary a little. So what I recommend is you guys just type in a few PA programs and all of their websites will tell you exactly what courses they want you guys to have and you create a spreadsheet or you write this all down and you say, okay, I need X, Y, Z courses. And as you're going through your undergraduate journey, you're ensuring that you are meeting all of their requirements so that when it comes time to apply for PA school, you leave no stone left unturned. In terms of the classes that you should focus on the most, uh, things like anatomy and physiology are very important because those tend to be the hardest classes uh, during your PA program in addition to things like clinical medicine. Although some programs might not want you to complete your bachelor's degree completely online, uh, whether you go to a community college and then a four-year institution or a private university, it, it doesn't really matter to them where you get your credits, as long as you earn your degree. 
So once you have your bachelor's degree in hand, you also need to have healthcare experience, relevant healthcare experience, things like being an EMT or paramedic, a CNA. Some schools will accept a phlebotomist or a scribe. Others will accept a hygienist, some, sort, some form of nursing. And the amount of patient care experience that you have in healthcare experience varies. Usually on average, the schools will want you to have 1,000, 2,000 hours of healthcare experience before you matriculate into their PA class. Sometimes you might get into PA school with 500 hours, and other times people are getting into PA school with about 10,000 hours worth of experience because they've had a long career in healthcare, and then they decided that they wanted to become a PA. Some PA schools will also want you to have shadowing opportunities, so they want you to shadow PAs and other medical providers just to make sure that you really understand what you're getting into before you sign up for it. When it comes to PA school admissions, it's better to be a well-rounded candidate, not just very linear in your pursuit of becoming a PA. Lastly, in order to get in PA school, some schools will require that you either take the GRE or this new PA specific entrance exam that they're starting to roll out. So applying to PA schools is a very competitive and difficult process. I will tell you guys that my PA program had 2,000 applicants, over 2,000 applicants, for 50 seats, okay? The average GPA in our PA class was over 3.6. A lot of PA schools will state that their lowest minimum that they will go to is 3.0 GPA. But just because that's their minimum doesn't mean that, you know, if you have a 3.0, it's an easy in. It, it, if, if you have a 3.2 or 3.3 GPA overall, you are still gonna be fighting an uphill battle getting into PA school because it's just so competitive. What's important uh, in applying to PA schools is that you use a portal known as CASPA where they have all of the PA programs in one convenient place. You kind of create one singular application and then you send that application out to all the programs from CASPA. And then some programs do have secondary applications where they want you to submit an extra essay or meet extra kind of requirements before they consider your application. The CASPA process usually starts in March or April and it will last up until the following year, more or less. Through CASPA, you submit all of your credentials and you start getting interviews for PA schools. Ultimately, in an ideal world, you are applying to multiple PA programs and then you will hear back from a handful of them for an interview. You go and interview at the school and you will receive an acceptance from them and you say, yes, I would like to attend your program. PA school is kind of split into two different sections, didactic year and a clinical year. You were in class almost every day. You were bombarded with exams. You were bombarded with clinical tasks. You had to go to other locations to shadow and learn. Our didactic education consisted of a fall semester, a spring semester, and a summer semester. Each semester had, you know, nine, 10, 11 courses in it. So it was very rigorous. It was not a cakewalk. After your didactic year, you transition into what's known as the clinical year, which is where you attend multiple different clinical rotations. These include family medicine, emergency medicine, psychiatry, women's health, pediatrics, general surgery, and a handful of electives that you get to choose from. At every point and stage in the clinical year, you have exams and presentations to do. You're going to the location, to the site. You're interacting with doctors, med students, other PA students, and you are seeing patients for the most part. The whole point of clinical year is you're not shadowing or kind of staying off the sideline. You're going into the room, you're seeing and evaluating patients, you're giving reports to preceptors, and you're, you're, you're doing hands-on things, right? Um, as a PA student, you're you're first assisting a surgeon in the operating room, and these are real patients and real procedures, and you are there uh, by their side helping them out. In the emergency department, for instance, you'll help suture and see patients. In things like family medicine, you'll be asked to come up with plans for patients. And the summation of our clinical year involved a capstone research paper and a presentation. After you do that, uh, once again, more tests and exams, and you congratulations. With your PA school degree in hand, you could sign up for the PANTS exam. It is a 300 question, five to six hour exam. Your PA programs want you to succeed in this exam. How difficult the PANTS is uh, will vary depending on who you ask. Personally, I think I got an easy version of the PANTS because I didn't really have any issue with it. Then there were also people who did super well in PA school who said it was super duper difficult. There are a few variations of the exam and some are more difficult than others, but then they're all kind of weighted so that it kind of averages it out.
After you successfully complete the pants, congratulations, you can finally apply for state licensure to start working as a physician assistant. Once you complete the pants, you're technically certified, board certified physician assistant. Some PAs after PA school will go on to complete residencies or fellowships, and I hate those terms because they're not equivalent to physician residencies uh, in any sense, but they are usually an additional year of learning, on-the-job learning, with some sort of curriculum attached to it, where, say, as a new grad PA, could you enter right into the ICU? Sure, but if you take one of these residency programs, they will literally handhold you the entire way and make sure that you are set up for success. Each residency program or fellowship, once again, I hate the name, depends on the quality of the program. So you have to vet each one individually. They also will hit you with a lower salary than what a new grad PA is making out of school. So you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons of further education for less money versus maybe just entering the workforce going from there. Guys, we're done with this video. I hope that in this video, I properly explained how to become a PA in a concise manner. Obviously, there's a lot of nuances. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. Consider following me on Instagram. I'm sharing photos of the PA lifestyle over there. Feel free to leave a comment down below in the video. And guys, stay safe out there. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.